I'm Pixie. I'm Zen. And this is Nerd Talk. Uh, we're coming to you live. Well, unless you're watching the video, in which case, not so live. Not but... so live, but you get to see our faces. So, I'm glaring at you right now. <laughs> you're you... always glaring. You're such a grouse. <laughs> Indeed. But hey, we've got chatters. Good to have you, chatters. Alright, it is uh, September 6th. And we're here to talk about Rift today. Yep. Today we'll be reviewing the MMO Rift. Because Which we've had yeah. for about a month now. Yep. So um, we'll be covering that today. We'll also be talking about, well, frankly, the rest of the year. Because there's some huge titles coming out. Because of the holiday 2011 thing coming up. So, so big they're huge. Well, yes. And actually I may have a zinger for this. Yes, we are in fact talking about the MMO that everyone who went to Gen Con got for free because, hey, it was a slow release week. Wait, wait, I got this, I got this. I... Oh, hey, stop that. But... Dang it, I can never get this thing to stop doing that. She can't quite get the zingers to function. Ah. Uh... Zinger fail. I know, right? It started out okay. So yeah, we've been playing Rift for about a month now, and uh, it, it's it been going interestingly. We're going to talk about it later. Uh, I'd also like to announce that our next review is going to be, um, uh, without a doubt, Dead Island, which we picked up today and have been beating our way through. Woo! In the meanwhile, this weekend, you will be at ICON. Yes, I will be in Springfield, Illinois this weekend at ICON, uh, their small little community college anime slash gaming convention. So hey, you'll probably find me near a war machine table getting my butt handed to me. Optimism! <laughs> totally you did that face at the camera, because right? I would make so many gifts out of it. Um... Echo, for, for your comment in chat, no, I actually don't still own a Microsoft Connect, which is what's been holding us back from reviewing uh, Child of Eden, which I really actually do want to play. There's, like, one game for it. But uh, I did watch the, the preview video that they posted for Rise of Nightmares. Um, they had this, like, great video where they were slowing down people's faces. And, like, I don't know if you know this, but, like, a person's face, before they go into an expression of ecstatic laughter or joy, they make the most horrible expression of pain. <laughs> so, like, it, it was trying to freak you out. Like, these people are having a horrible time playing Rise of Nightmares. Oh, wait, no, they're enjoying themselves greatly. <laughs> so, this, if you don't know, is the, the first-person Kinect horror beat-em-up. So think like Dead Island, except you're using your Kinect and actual motions to take out the monsters. This sounds gimmicky and stupid. Yeah, so like you've got the guy standing there and he's got his hands like uh, he's holding a chainsaw, swinging it around, and on the screen you can see that his character's hands are doing the same thing. Mm. But pretty much it looks like an on-rail, House of the Dead type horror game. Yeah. I know, it might be worth doing a, a video of Let's Play of that. We've been talking about doing more Let's Plays forever. Yeah, but we still have yet to figure out the capture device. Derp. Also, picture in picture would be nice. Yeah. You should experiment with that one evening. So yeah, um, welcome Wolfen, uh, welcome Echo, and ST. I'd also like to welcome Test. I love it when Test shows up. <laughs> Test, you're so great. It could be Saint, or Street, or... I, are there any states that are ST? I don't think no. so. No. We have no ST states. No. Okay, then. Possibly? So, yeah. Next week, expect a, uh, a Dead Island review. And hello and welcome to Leak Spin. I love having people. Welcome, chatters. It's good to see you. So, should we uh, jump onto things, or do you want to do our uh, obligatory social commentary things first? Uh, the social networking bits? Yes, those. Okay, because social commentary is a completely different concept. <laughs> Just so we're aware. People are jerks. That'd be like... Their social <laughs> commentary covered. <laughs> That'd be like a go feed the poor or something, I don't know. <laughs> no, that um, would be social responsibility. Social commentary is just making comments about things. Anyway. Anyway. So, 
If you like what you're hearing today, um, or... You know, How could you, you not so far? <laughs> or if you end up deciding that you like what's in the show later and you haven't already, um, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at NerdTalkPixie. You still can't follow me. Well, you could. It's just you won't say anything. I don't like followers. <laughs> or you can check us out at Facebook.com slash NerdTalk. Oh my gosh, you remember the URL now. I did. This is an exciting day. Come on, how many weeks have I been, I've been working on this? Like, three years worth? <laughs> it's about. Ah, oh, man. And also, we've got To Kill a DJ goodness coming up, so keep an eye out for that, because we're going to have auctions for awesome things. Yeah, if you would actually like some War Machine, or even Hordes models, painted by yours truly, um, there's going to be an auction for that. If you he would will like... paint a battle box for you. Yes, for, for the affordable price of charity, I will pay a battle box, <laughs> and you will get it. Yeah, I'm not making money off this one. Man. <laughs> I think it was the delivery, really. I have timing. All right, um, or we'll have other things up. Uh, for instance, I believe we'll be getting some things donated from local game stores that you'll be able to bid on. Uh, rumor has it Luca has agreed to... Uh, to create some sprites. Uh, yeah, courtesy of Pixel Perfect Sprites. Mm -hmm. Shame, sparkle, sparkle. Yep, promotion. Um, so yeah, I I don't know what I'm getting yet, but you'll know as soon as I do. <laughs> there will be stuff. Stuff will be auctioned. And we're um pretty much for children. In, in, yeah, in, in, ca in case you haven't already heard me give this spiel a million times, um, To Kill a DJ is a biannual charity that we do. Uh, to raise funds for Advocate Hope Children's Hospital Family Assistance Fund. It's our biggest service learning project at Lewis University. Um, we kick ass at it. And pretty much the idea is that, similar to the fashion in that uh, runners for a marathon will take contributions based on how many miles they're doing or whatever, um, we're taking money um, for however many hours we're going to be on the air. And so we will be continually broadcasting for a minimum of six hours straight. Usually at some stupid time of day, like 6 a.m. on a Sunday, like last year. Ah. Yeah, as the pictures on the Facebook will show the last time we did this. Yeah. At, like, midnight to 6 a.m., I believe it was. It was dumb. <laughs> Good times. But hey, it's for helping children. We're no child's play, but we'll try. So yeah, and this year we, uh, Nerd Talk would like to make this our best year yet, so... That's not going to take much effort, but we'd like to make it better than our best year could hope to be. Um, so if you'd like to help us out with that, um, I will give you more details as they come in, and there will be cool stuff for you to buy. Mm-hmm. Come on, you get a War Machine or Hordes Battle Box painted by me? Bean Sprites will be available, there's going to be... Uh... Oh. Game store stuff that we have yet to confirm what. Yeah, there's, there's ideas floating around. So yeah, I guess we can get on to our game review for the week. So Rift, that game we got for free for going to Gen Con, but other people can buy it. If you want, you know. Or find a friend who went to Gen Con and just has the box kind of sitting there. So we, uh, we ended up playing for our free month that comes with the package. Uh, you just enter your code. You do have to enter uh, some form of additional payment when you pick up the game. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a credit card or a subscription time card, how much are they running that for these days? You can actually get a copy of Rift off of Amazon for... Uh, like 11 bucks. Yeah, $11 you can get a copy of Rift. Or if you want to go all out and get the collector's edition, that's selling for uh, thirty six ninety nine. So, not really an expensive game. Wow, you can actually get the box copy for cheaper than the digital download. There's only four available of that box copy, though. Yeah, I don't think they're doing the box copy anymore. So, this is a uh, an MMO, without a doubt. You're going to be signing into servers. It works like every MMO, you know. So They stole a lot of things from WoW. Yeah, <laughs> there's a bunch of different servers you can connect to. We specifically played on the Silk Web server. Mm -hmm. um, when you join the game and get to character creation, there's some things that you should probably know. Uh, you're going to have to choose a faction, and the faction determines who you're going to play the game with. There are no restrictions regarding can you have characters of different factions on the same server, like WoW style. Mm -hmm. Even on PvP servers, you can have characters of both factions. Uh, I don't know how accurate that is, because I definitely remember on the same server rolling a couple different faction 
races. So yes, you can have a guardian and a defiant on the same server. Yes. Yes, that's what I was saying. You were saying that WoW didn't let you do that. WoW, WoW didn't for the longest time. Yeah. When you got into WoW, though, they had lifted that restriction. Yeah. So, original WoW is what I was talking about here, but yeah. Well, of course. it's the Rift looked at all the things that other MMOs, specifically WoW, have done and went, Did that work? No? Okay. But this did. We'll take that. <laughs> we'll, we'll borrow that. Borrow steel. These are just degrees. Um, so, yeah. At any rate, there's so it's a, a lot of it is very similar to WoW and Dynamics. Um, the, there's the the two factions are the the one thing I will compliment the game on with the two factions is that there is a vast difference in playing these two factions. Your story starts off completely different uh, based on what faction you pick. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can talk about each one individually. We'll we'll cover the Defiance first because that's what we both played as during the majority of our time in this game. I kind of really like those guys for reasons we'll get into shortly. Okay, so the Defiant game starts off, well, at the end of the world, yeah. which is kind of neat. Um, the story goes that it's the last day of the planet. Uh, these dark forces of this evil dude named Regulos have, well, triumphed, and the world is going to be destroyed. And there's dragons today. involved. Yeah, the world has been ripped apart. Um, the Defiant civilization has been destroyed because of its war with the Guardians. Mm. Uh, they simply didn't have the ability to stand up against the Guardians um, Ascended, mm -hmm. which are your super special people that you get to be one of. So basically a person who can use souls of other people to give them power. Yep. Um, without those, the Defiant's lost. So hey, it's the last day of the planet and you're starting your game where they've just learned how to create their own Ascended. And they happen to have a time machine. And you need to get to it and get back to the point where you can help your people. You get to be all super special and we made one of you and you need to go back in time to fix everything. Except for all those <coughs> other thousands of guys who were also standing near the portal here. Just a major plot hole, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they make a big excuse that you are super special and you are the one that we made. Mm -hmm. And yet there's tons of other player characters, so yep. that's kind of a gaping plot hole right from the start. Yep. Um, so the Defiant specialize in techno-magic, which is that they build machines to do magical things for them. They're, they're the high-technology race. Um, it's very steampunk, and yeah. Sen likes it a lot. There's <laughs> lots of lightning and special effects going on in their cities. It's very neat to see. Mm -hmm. Um... And big robots. The large robots. One of the problems... And dude, you... there are robot horse mounts. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the problems with their storyline overall is that, well, if you're a fan of time-traveling settings, you're, you're going to find major holes in, in the logic that's going on here. In that the dude who invented, well, you, completely goes off and does another project because he's like, yeah, that me doesn't exist anymore. But wait, aren't, isn't there going to be a problem if you don't invent me? Shouldn't I be disappearing now because you changed your mind? Mm -hmm. uh, happens, I suppose. Uh, I think what happened, rather than actual time travel, you is just that you hit went, another timeline. Yeah, is you're in an, a parallel like dimension, and that makes a bit more sense. So what you're telling me is they they didn't invent a tele or a time machine; they invented a teleporter. <laughs> Kind of. They, they've, they've invented specific trans-dimensional travel. Gotcha. Okay. And th that makes a bit more sense in that he's not very worried about the version of him that was in your specific your universe and timeline. Yeah, everyone seems totally okay hearing that, yeah, you died in my timeline horribly. No one seems to really care. Big guy, horns, dragon, yeah. Killed everything, yeah. So, uh, moving on, uh, one of the things that I like the best about the Defiance is their leaders. The, this is the more open of the two uh, races, or well, factions. Yeah. And so, like, one of their leaders is named the Faceless Man, who actually has spent time with the enemy, mm -hmm. uh, having been a part of it. He's just really cool. I loved seeing him. You specifically liked... Uh, Asha Katari. Yeah, Asha, who serves as the military leader mm -hmm. for the uh, for the Defiance. 
Mm-hmm. It has some great one-liners. She's she's pretty great. I like her. I wish she wore more clothes, but you know. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that later. Uh, continuing, the Guardians are the other faction, and this would be the faction that. Oh hey, tall. Haven't seen you in a while. Hey, welcome to chat. This is the faction that devoutly follows the game's gods, called the uh, Vigil. called the Vigil. The these are your religious faction. And pretty much they didn't like that the Defiance had, like, all this tech. Yeah. And so they decided to break it. And, and they which ended left the every, world. Which, which left everybody helpless for when Regulos and his, like, cult showed up and destroyed everything. Because... Oops. The technology that would have saved everybody was now broken. Oops. They're, they're and, and so, yeah, the, the Guardians and the Defiance were too busy fighting each other, and then they couldn't, like... Stand up against the giant evil demon thing set to destroy their world from the plane of sure they're dragons, but yeah. No, Regulus is a demon. Yeah, he's I thought a, he was a dragon. Nope, he's a dark one. Okay. So, um, that's the two factions you get to pick. Each one has three races within the faction. So both race, ha- uh, both factions have their own flavor of human. Mm. Um, just you're a human. Let's see. Let's see. There's actual names for these things. But they're humans. This is like coming up with a super special name for a dwarf, which we didn't bother to do. Yeah, there's the Mathians, or the Mathosians, which are the guardian flavor O human. And what do. It's like the Edda for. uh, F. 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 Um, there's the Bami, which are giant people on the Defiant yep. side. So Defiants also get giants, and they also get the Kalari, which is just a fancy name for Dark Elves. Mm-hmm. And then there's High Elves, which don't get a fancy name on the Guardian side. And Dwarves, Ooh. also lacking fancy names on I, the I see other human side. as an option here. Yep, it, no, they're actually called human. Yeah, that's, that's just two different cultures of human. Oh. That's the thing. The Mythosians and the Eth are just two different factions of human. I see. And because of their unique racial uh, abilities and where they live, that that's it. Okay, then. Yeah, I, I am agreeing with Tall. Tall was clarifying the fact that Regulos just came, that no one sent him. Yeah, he, he wanted to be there and was all like, I'm going to destroy this now. Or, 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 <laughs> he just came. Tur, hur, hur. So, yeah, um... Each race has its own unique extra abilities, nothing that really modifies the classes specifically. Um, yeah, they're just extra bonus things. So, for instance, your giant could just do a really big jump. Yep, I could jump very far. Yep, and my F could run really, really fast. And the Kalari can, like, temporarily turn themselves into a fox and go a bit faster. Which I kind of figured was going to be the race that you wanted, but, you know... Considering that thing on my back, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did roll one of those later. That's my solo character. So, regardless of what race or faction you pick, the actual class system in the game works actually really interestingly. That's the thing I like most about Rift. That's, like, their unique feature that I think is the coolest. So, when you create your character, you are going to pick one of four different classes. You can pick Warrior... Cleric, Rogue, or Mage. Mm -hmm. And from there, it works a lot like, wow. That particular choice determines what kind of armor you can wear, and then the, like, I guess, subclasses or specializations you can pick from there. Yeah. Which is done via acquiring souls. You can have up to three at once, like, on you, like, active, but... I don't think there's really any limitation to how many you can get. No, actually, you can buy every type of soul for your class. I mean, that's a big money sink, but, you know. But it allows you to customize your character any time you want after you've created it. Yes. Which is kind and of then you do, and, and then switching between them, you don't lose all the talent points, I guess you would call them, spent into them, your skill points or whatever. Yeah, you can actually make a couple different sets as long as you're willing to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Which is actually really cool. Um, 
So starting off, I originally rolled a mage and then eventually switched off to a warrior because mm -hmm. I'm kind of known as our group's tank when we get going. I enjoy getting punched in the face. I enjoy standing in the back and not actually looking at the battles. Healers. Chat box. Oh, I was going to say chat box. You can try guessing what that is, but... Right. Um, essentially what the souls do for you is allow you to customize... I'm going to do this in WoW terms just because it's easiest. It's It lets you pick what three talent trees you want. Mm -hmm. So instead of WoW where it's, I rolled my class, I'm a warlock... And yeah, I so have my are, talent tree. There are tree. fewer classes available, but way more souls. Mm -hmm. So you you pick one broad category, and then you specify it like yeah, you can so really intensely. Yeah, you, so you've it. got your three talent trees. You get to pick what three you want mm -hmm. out of a list of, let's see, how many? If uh, you pick one, it'll suggest what other two are good to go with it. But, but there's, yeah. it's not going to force you. you. You have nine talent trees per class to choose that you can just mix and match your abilities from. And as you put abilities into a certain talent tree, it's going to unlock extra powers. Just, uh, even without putting points in something, it's just, I put three points in my uh, Reaver talent tree. I've unlocked a new ability. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of cool. For instance, um, my cleric uh, took souls in Purifier, Sentinel, and Warden souls. And each of those do different types of healing. So one of them is a group heal type of thing. Another one does really big single um, target heals. Another one does healing over time. And one of the coolest things in this is that, based on what talents you take, you could actually completely customize different characters. Um, so for instance, my mage, I took Necromancer and Warlock as two of my talents, which those are just based on damage. But then for my third one, I took Chloromancer, which is a healer type. Mm -hmm. So my mage could effectively heal a group if, if it wanted to. Mm -hmm. And as long as I put enough points into that talent tree. Whereas I just distributed mine all across because that's a dedicated healing thing and I wanted to have all of the options for healing. Mm -hmm. But you can play it pretty much how you want that way. Yep. And in addition, uh, so there's actually eight souls normally available to your character. Each class also has a ninth soul. Specifically, the PvP soul. One that you unlock uh, through PvPing that is just entirely dedicated to hurting other players. So nice. The cleric gets the Templar, the uh, mage gets the Archmage. These are just things that are designed specifically so that your average player won't have trouble figuring out, well, what's good. They won't essentially have to net deck. I should probably see what's going on in chat. Not much. <laughs> yeah, the Chloromancer just sounds funny, but it's actually a plant mage. I have chlorine magic! No. White. I, I think that's, that's short for, like, chlorophyll. Chloroform. Yeah. Chlorophyll. No, not chloroform. Chloroform's that stuff you put on rags when you want to knock somebody out. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's why all my plants died. <laughs> chloroform is the little, like... Thing that makes plants green and that they use to do... Yeah. yeah. Photosynthesis. Dang it, now you got me doing that. <laughs> Send ruiner of English. So, yeah. Um, I, I think the soul... Uh, the soul tree aspect of this game is by far the coolest part because it's going to be really, really hard for, like, two different players who aren't specifically following an online guide to create the same character. Mm -hmm. Like, I went into the PvP system in this game a couple times, which does work exactly like WoW's does. Mm -hmm. And was encountering, like, players, even other mages, doing completely different things. One of them was setting me on fire. One of them was sending his little undead minion to beat me up. One of them was beating me up with his little fire minion. One of them was just standing there looking at me funny. That was the, uh, the dominator. And the Stormcaller was, like, blasting the ground with lightning storms that covered a big area. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's really cool that there's so many unique character combinations to this. Even tanking. I created two different tanks at one point. I made one go... Uh, these were both defensive tanks, but one of them was a Paladin, where the other one was a Void Knight. And they played completely differently. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. So uh, that's probably Rift's like coolest thing. There's also one other, one other thing that's part of their gimmick, and as you can probably guess from the title, it's the rifts. Yeah. So while you're out in the field, just like doing quests, there are tons of random world events in this game. Uh, the big ones are specifically called rifts, where just this tear in reality will open, and one of the uh, elemental planes will leak into the world, and it's up to you as players to seal it. Now you may be wondering what's in this for me. Loot. Epic loot. Only acquirable through that. Also, you know, sometimes you might, like, log off in what you think is a perfectly safe village and then come back and find out that it's going to completely run over with, like, undead or something. Yeah, no, the starting area of Free March just completely got overrun several times while we were there. Yep. Which... The negative about this is that if you're on, like, a low-population server... It gets overrun a lot. Yeah, because... And there, then there's nobody to help you clean it up. There, right? there aren't those players around to just fix things for you. Mm -hmm. However, um, there's there's a thing you can do. It's it's when you upgrade, like, your ascended power. You, you get, like, little, like, gem things from completing rift, rift events and closing them and whatnot. And you can use those as a currency to buy, like, upgrades or skills for your ascended abilities. Mm -hmm. Things like, you know, your ability to close rifts. Um, you can also upgrade little, uh, the ward stones are what the enemies go after in order to take over an area. And so you can upgrade the ward stones using a certain power if you have it. And then if enough people upgrade a ward stone, it'll get more health, it'll get more defense. They'll uh, add more get NPCs turrets. to help it, yeah. Um, it'll get, you know, means of defending itself. Uh, if you upgrade it all the way, there's like a holographic image of Asha Katari that's inspirational. <laughs> Gives you a buff. Here, check out your leader not wearing much clothing. Yay! Okay, she's also a badass and ideologically awesome, but, you know. She's also I guess not there's wearing eye pants! I guess there's eye candy involved, too. <laughs> So I guess uh, having explained the basics of Rift, we can go That's ahead. That's how the game works. Yep, we can go ahead and go into our normal review shtick. So Sounds graphically, sounds. Yep. yep. Graphically, Rift looks really good. Um, the problem with that is because it's an MMO, you're going to need a pretty spiffy computer to run it at decent settings. My laptop cannot do it, but then again, the video card is also slowly dying. So. And even my computer, which was built what three years ago now does have trouble in the high congestion areas. Like the capital city. Yeah, it, it'll it chug. Um, I was just playing the game, and uh, and it was having trouble on, like, uh, mid-afternoons where the area was very full. So e expect that to be an issue. That said, when you're out in the field, just, like, maybe doing uh, a little bit of grinding, or if you go into a PvP area or a dungeon... The game runs beautifully on very little, uh, very little, uh, graphics ability. You're gonna point this out, yes, there's a dungeon group finder just like WoW. Yep, and it's actually set up very well. Just a second. There we are. But, yeah, I... I guess that might be a bit of a problem if you're running on a lower-end machine. Yes, but Tall, to answer your question, my computer does make the noise of a choo-choo train when it's chugging. Herp. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. Just want a little train icon to be going across the bottom of the screen, representing that your computer is having trouble. Yeah, so, I mean, you can turn down, like, all the settings, but... But me being the reviewer that I am, I had to crank them up as high as they could go and watch my computer fail. Well, see, I found out that that actually hurts some of the mechanics in the game. Really? Because, well, see, if you turn down the video set, the video settings, then you can't see as far. Mm -hmm. And then you don't know, oh, there's a <laughs> rift over there. <laughs> I'm running at a wolf right now. <laughs> you can track the rifts on your map, though. Yes, but, I mean, that's, that's the mini-map. Mm -hmm. And so that won't show that, you know... I could go look at that, or I could, Yeah, you know. on my computer, you could look, like, over the hill, way into the distance, and go, there's a rift, like, a mile that way. I could probably go hit up. Mm -hmm. um, I do really like the auto-join feature, the join public group. 
Yeah. So if you, you run into a rift, the game will pop up a little icon at the top of your screen, just like, do you want to join this public group? So that you'll get credit as the group finishes the rift. So if a bunch of you just randomly decide to gather together to do the rift, you could all get credit and cross loot and whatever mm -hmm. for each other, you know, basically helping out. Yep. And then you can uh, say, say Sen and I are in a group and we happen upon like a couple other different like groups of people or whatever in one rift, we can join the groups and then unjoin them exactly as they were before. So yep. with Sen and I still in one group. Yeah, it won't force us to disband our group in order to join leave the rift group. Or, yeah. And so that's a cool feature. Mm -hmm. I think it's implemented very well. Um, Sound-wise, the game is actually really impressive. I, I did like all the natural the sounds. The the game's soundtrack is fantastic. I know, right? Yeah, it. Currently, my favorite uh, MMO soundtrack belongs to Ion. Lousy game, great soundtrack, but uh, this is definitely getting up there. I, I enjoyed what I heard. Mm -hmm. I especially like that the game's main characters are all voice acted. So, uh, watching the cutscene where you got to see your girl just, well, get pwned, but she went down fighting, that, that was very cool and very epic. Mm -hmm. um, the game does a great job with its cinematics. She's very dramatically voice acted. Oh my gosh, so many dramatic pauses. Mm -hmm. It's the end of the world as they know it. Everything we fought for will have been... In vain. It's it's just long pauses there. Shatner would be proud. Yeah, I was thinking that too. So yeah, uh, there is that. Both sides feature uh, really uh, integrated voice acting. And even like just NPCs in the game you'll meet. Uh, so for instance, the villains of Free March are mm -hmm. all voice acted. Um, now, I, I would have liked to see more voice acting out of your personal character. Yeah. As opposed to, Hoo Oh, come on. Mine made a dumber sound than that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> she sounded like Timmy from South Park. <laughs> Why are we referencing that? So, anyway, yeah. The, so your, yeah. Your character just kind of makes the, the standard MMO grunts and whines. I wouldn't call it whining so much as, like, I guess, panting. No, my character whined when she got hit. <laughs> but it was a... Eh. Yeah, she got hit and was like, eh. It's like, that's not the noise you made when someone hits you with an axe. That's the noise you make when you discover, like, I don't know. Somebody didn't flush. Yeah. Someone left a paper towel on the floor. Eh. It's not the sound, oh, I got hit with an axe. Eh. <laughs> That, that definitely could have been done better. It's especially bad if you're playing as the High Elf. But apparently the High Elves just weren't made to tank. Because they make ridiculous noises when they get hit. <laughs> Alright. Um, continuing then, I guess... Uh, difficulty, right? No, story. Yeah. Which we've already kind of covered. It It's the war between these two factions. And meanwhile, because... while they're doing this, they're completely ignoring death that's slowly approaching. So it looks like a reenactment, pretty much, of the future that you were supposed to go prevent. Maybe that's why they had to make thousands of them. So we were just saying that a lot of timelines all converged on this point? Yes, like a lot of them. They all, they all program these, like, d d we'll call them time machines for the sake of convenience because that's what the game calls them. They all program these things. They all made them to go to this specific timeline and all of these universes have screwed up and sent their one ascended back. Alright, we can only get one of these universes right. Let's make it this one. Oops. Oh crap, the account ran out. Oh, that's, there goes the world. Alright, uh, continuing then? Okay, then. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading chat right now. Yeah, this is the whining. Yeah. <laughs> this wolf is so inconvenient. <laughs> Stop mauling Eating my me. leg. It sounds like a title for the episode. <laughs> stop tank! Me. This wolf won't stop biting me. No, it's bad when the tank is making those noises. <laughs> Why do you think we didn't play Guardians? Well, that's right, because their NPCs are terrible. They're all terrible. 
Yeah, you yeah. want to see what a self-righteous faction is, go go play uh, the Defi- the Guardians in this game. Defiance are at least like, Wait. yeah, we don't know everything, but uh, we're trying. Don't destroy us. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, story-wise, I like what's being set up here. I, I think it's cool. I, I think the best part is... Uh, they're actually improving or adding to the story all the time. They're adding new dungeons. They're trying to get things out as they go. It, it's like being an old WoW. It, you know, when Blizzard frequent, had to try. There's frequent patching going on, and while they're frequently patching, they're also adding new stuff every time. It might be small stuff, but it's stuff. Yeah, they, they are actually increasing the scope of the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, they recently added new dungeons to the game. Uh, they're adding epic level dungeons, which include more characters. And it, dungeons, like in WoW these days, actually have a normal mode and a hard mode. Mm-hmm. So if you're a player who just like wants to see the content, just go on normal mode. If you're a serious raider who wants the serious gear, hard mode's there for you. Mm-hmm. And the rewards are appropriate. Literally, they just seem to be actually taking <laughs> the best... Nice tall... They're they're ha, ha, ha. nice. They're uh, they're actually taking the best things that worked in WoW and other MMOs and putting them in this. It, I think and I think that's how you need to make the WoW killer MMO. What worked here? What didn't work? All right, we're gonna take that and that pile of things that didn't work. We'll, we'll pass on that. Mm-hmm. So, As opposed to all the MMOs that just try to copy while wholesale, yeah. and they keep all the bad things, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, the level cap is only 50, which you can get to relatively fast. I mean, but we're, like, halfway there, aren't we? We were Almost. halfway there after, like, what, four serious, like, grind play sessions? Mm-hmm. So it, it's not difficult there's actually, to level There's actually, um, I'd, I'd like to bring this up because this is kind of story-related. Um, there, there's actually, when you go to take a quest... There's, there's a different background. There's, like, the blue ones for the miscellaneous things that you don't really need to do or whatever. And then there's the gold backgrounds for this is story sensitive. This is important to the story. You might want to pay attention here. Mm-hmm. You should actually read the text on this one is basically what we're saying. Or, you know, it's, 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 it's a big thing that's, like, relevant to the global area at large. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which, which is definitely cool because it's nice to separate the, separate the daily crafting quests from the, hey, this is, like, earth-shattering important. Yeah, let's go kill Jacob or whatever. It's, it's spelled like Jacob with a U. Jacob, yeah, I don't Jacob, know. the major boss of the first area. Yeah. Who's just basically a regular skeleton model, which we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, actually, we can get into that now. One of the problems I do have with this game is that it reuses a lot of graphics, specifically in the armors. So you do have options to die and change colors of things. You have the option to die. No, have, to die as in to, to change the arm. color of things. Yeah, so it's like I, I took up... You can have three professions, actually, at one time. Mm-hmm. So there's like three different gathering pre- professions. You could take all of those if you wanted to just make money that way, I guess. But um, And then there's like a few different crafting things. And so I took up the um, apothecary thing, which is like alchemy and WoW, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um and I was able to make dyes with that, which I could then use on my armor. And so it's like, yeah, but this armor's kind of ugly, but it's not so bad when you die in a pretty shade of blue. Yeah, the problem is the models are very repetitive. Can you fish? Let me check really quick. That's a good question, because I'm not a fisher in my games. I know we went to a fishing village at one point, but... Uh... But that could have just been background. Just I'm saying. googling this. Uh, actually, yeah, looks like you can. Do we have fishing in Rift? Yes, I think. Maybe. All I'm finding are like old forum posts from like 2010. <laughs> Asking if there will be fishing. I don't know. I'm thinking no. Fishing, not a thing. We we actually have an MMO where it's like, 
We don't want you to spend your time standing in the same spot fishing. Wow. You're an epic adventurer. Go do something. We'll let the peasants fish. <laughs> Because that, that's what we did with our hope for the world. Our, our person that thousands of people died to get back in time. What I'm fishing. <laughs> that's fine. Shouldn't you be out killing monsters and saving people? Nope. But I gotta get this to level 50 at least. I'm a fish. We have peasants for that. <laughs> See that guy? He's a fisherman. I'm a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Hero with the fishing rod. So yes, there is no fishing in this game. Thanks. <laughs> it needed to be done. So I get... I'll, I'll track that up as an intelligent move. <laughs> I don't want my hero fishing. Yes, I suppose you would be the best ascended fisherman ever. The problem is you should be saving the planet. There's dragons and stuff? Nope. Fish. I spend my time at the end of this dock. At least WoW makes the excuse that, oh, there's millions of you adventurers. Yeah, you're supposed to be a super special snowflake in, um... In Rift. Yeah. So, yeah. that That's a thing. Um, but aside from all that... Difficulty-wise, it's at the level of a standard MMO. I, mean, I didn't find it too hard to jump in, but then again, I also had WoW as my first MMO. Yeah, at, at the upper levels, when you start doing the high-end raids, you do need to know what you're doing. They, they are ridiculously hard at times. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. Because if you are playing a, a, a dungeon on hard mode, by definition, it should be hard. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong there. L O L O L. Like, like hard mode in WoW isn't that difficult. Like, playing things on heroic, it's just a matter of patience at that point. Patience or having the right gear. Mm -hmm. This is actually tough. So, I, I can appreciate that, really. That this is a game in its infancy that wants to keep its players, wants to keep them doing things. It, it can't just spend its time appeasing everyone like WoW can these days. I mean, WoW's at the point where you want it to look like your old armor? Here, it looks like your old armor. We don't care anymore. Here, you want to be a different race? There, there you go. You want to be on a different server? Why not? We'll give you that too. <laughs> you want Horde in your Alliance server? Go ahead. Blizzard's at the point where it's I just like... I was aware that... Honestly, I was not aware that that used to be a thing. Blizzard's at a point where it's just like, we'll give them whatever they want. We don't care anymore. Whatever keeps them here. Of course, I'm going to make you feel old now because I was a teenager when I started playing. Wow. Mm hmm? Whatever. <laughs> I was a sophomore in college. Whatever. Ha ha. Blizzard, they will just give players whatever they want. Customers always right type of thing. No. Blizzard's at the point of just, they don't care. Just fuck it. Why bother? Yep, there's our explicit tag. <laughs> oh, chat box. I uh, love you dearly. Chat. So, uh, yeah, that... It feels like Rift is actually trying to be the hardcore MMO that, like, the other free-to-plays aren't. Mm -hmm. So, like, even EverQuest 2 tried to be hardcore and failed. Ion... I can't even define the number of things that went wrong with Ion. Namely, that they lied to you directly on the box. Yeah... It's not so much fly anywhere as it is fly in the specific area. Well, hover in the specific area for like a minute. <laughs> Until you fall to your death because of the box lied to you. <laughs> Did you really? Yep. Aww. Crash and sends hopes and dreams. Right? I liked my flying little dark angel character who then plummeted to the ground because the game lies. Made of lies and misery. So yeah, um, big enough. I I I really liked Rift. If nothing else, 
because of the soul system, because of the creativity, it lends uh, the game. You know, I can get as creative with my class as I want. If I can find ways to use it, I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's definitely the major selling point for me is that I don't have to like go spend like whatever amount of time researching on the internet. Okay, what's the best talent tree to go with? And even if you, in WoW, for your specific class, there's really only one right answer. Yeah. Now, if you're playing a warlock, it's destruction. Why would you want the demon, and why would you want affliction? Mm -hmm. If you're playing a mage, it's whatever the expansion tells you it is. Mm -hmm. Because really, having multiple talents, multiple talent trees going at once, you're just weakening the DPS of your character, mm -hmm. or the maximum healing ability. I forget, is there an HPS stat? I've never been a healer. Um, yeah, they, they, they do have counters for that. As a tank, it's never really mattered to me. Cause well, all as that, an add-on, you, you know, like, you've got, like, the damage counting add-ons, there's also healing counting. All that matters to me as a tank is, did my life hit zero? No? Alright, I'm good. <laughs> that, that's it. So, uh... I do like yeah. that there are a couple different options as far as resin goes when you die. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is kind of neat. That you're not first, just forced back to the graveyard. First, you get the option to soul walk, which is the preferred option, and in about like f what five to ten seconds, you, you get, get fifteen seconds yeah. to walk wherever you want, and then you will res wherever you happen to be standing. Not wherever your body is, wherever you happen to be standing while you're walking around. You get fifteen seconds to run away from your corpse to get to some kind of safety, yes. and you don't have to go body loot. And then. Uh, Tall, I'm, I'm a lousy tank. I'm going to go ahead and tell you now. I never keep track of my aggro. My entire way of doing this is, did I die? No. Did anyone else die? No. I did a great job. <laughs> um, at any rate, the, uh, the soul walk, while being awesome, is the one thing you can use only once per hour. Yeah. Now, if you use that, the second time you die within that hour, you're going to have to go, like, actually resurrect, which will pop your soul over at the Spirit healer, yeah. whatever he is. Resurrection agent. Whatever. And you can either... You can either res there, which and then takes... That gives you like it a costs more damage, yeah, and you get a debuff. Um, and it, d d instead of, instead of like having your gear deteriorate, it's your soul vitality that goes down, and then once your soul vitality hits zero, then you start taking um, penalties... But, so yeah, your, your soul takes more damage that way, or you can go from the healer and then... Run back to your corpse, where you can rest. just do an or is. That will still give you some soul vitality damage, but not as much. Yeah, you'll only take 10% if you do it that way, whereas I think if you resurrect at the... I think it's like 20. At the agent, yeah, it's 20 or 25. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there are those options. I do like the soul walk feature. I think that was really cool, because if I just happen to make a mistake and die once per hour... Mm -hmm. It's not going to take me five minutes to get back to my body. I can just walk Or, you know, away. depending how far away you are from the nearest graveyard, whatever. Yeah, that could be a long walk. And if I'm in the middle of, like, say, a world event and my party didn't die, I can get back in the fight much faster. Mm -hmm. And there's... I mean, I, I thought that was cool. I thought the not having to constantly pay to fix gear was cool. Mm-hmm. The PvP Battlegrounds are actually a really awesome feature in it. That They actually, rather than just hey, let's go kill each other. The battlegrounds all have specific objectives, which are varied. There's already a PvP finding system. You don't have to walk up to an NPC. You can just click a button on your interface, and it will have you join just the Just like the dungeon finder, pretty much. Yep. So it, they um, are doing that correctly. There's it's, so, so go over what one of these uh, PvP things is like with the objectives. Well, the, the low-end battleground is called the Black Garden, mm -hmm. which... Um, the point is that there's an artifact in the middle of the, of the PvP arena, and whichever team can pick it up first is going to start earning points. You earn points faster the closer you are to the middle of the ring, so if you pick it up and just stay at the center, you'll earn more points than the team who picks it up and runs all the way to the back end of their spawn area. Mm -hmm. They'll be earning, like, maybe one point per tick, mm -hmm. whereas the team that stands in the middle with the thing is going to earn ten. So that's a nice balancing act. Um, also, the person who is holding the artifact takes an increasing amount of damage every time your points tick. So in other words, it's going to kill you? It will eventually kill that player. 
Interesting. And so either another player on their side can pick it up and it'll keep accumulating for them. Or can if you no- just keep passing it back and forth? Or? Uh, yes, you, you can just choose to drop it. But if it's not picked up for 15 seconds, and if you take any damage, it will interrupt your pickup. Uh, well, it'll thinking, teleport like, back to the middle. It, do like a bunch of damage to you, drop it, immediately hand it to the next guy before you die. You know? Yeah, and then they can pick it up. Yeah. yeah, no, you can totally do that. Just play hot potato. That's essentially what it is. <laughs> it's a round of hot potato, except people are trying to blow each other's faces off with... And also the hot potato is trying to kill you. Yes, lethal hot potato. Interesting. So it, it was a really neat battleground, and at least on our server, it was balanced to the point where... It was really hard for one side to just dominate the other. As opposed to, uh, wow, when you got onto the PvP battlegrounds, it was either, oh, Horde's just kicking butt today, or Alliance yeah. is just over Horde's kicking butt, over. go do something else, or Alliance is winning, go make a sandwich. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, you would get onto Guild Chat or whatever and be like, yeah, who's winning over there? Who's winning today? Yep, that's it. Oh, Altric Valley. The Horde owned you. Just so, so yeah, that's a thing. Anything else that we have to say about Rift? Um, I really want to see where this MMO is going. I, I I like that they're contributing more to the game than just, yeah, this is our once a week patch. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll be back in a couple months with some actual content. No, every uh, week, multiple times per week, they are updating this game. I've been having a lot of fun with it, actually. Um... That, that being said, since old Re- the Old Republic is set for a, like, holiday 2011 release, I'm hearing rumors of that they're completely insubstantial, by the way, but um, I'm hearing rumors um, about, like, possibly, no like, November 2nd for an official release and then the early access for the collector's mm-hmm. pre-orders. It's, yep. like, later this month. Yeah, so that that's definitely coming soon. And so, I mean, as much as I'm liking Rift, I'm going to have to abandon it to go play that, because, I mean, come on, Bioware MMO! <laughs> yep, Bioware MMO with actual, like, Please, just take ones. my money already! <laughs> so, yeah. Take, well, shut up and take my money! So, I guess that, that'll conclude our uh, Rift review. Um, I'll recommend it for, for what it is. If you're looking for a, an MMO post-WoW playing... Uh, something to hold you over until something else comes out, or just something you can jump on for a couple hours a week, play, and move on. You can do a lot worse than uh, than Rift, really. It, it's fun. Yep. It's definitely the game that lets you customize ah, your character. Ah, the real most. question is, is it better than WoW, or is it worth leaving WoW for? If you have investment in WoW, mm-hmm. you'll nothing is going to get you off of it. Yeah. Just th- that's it. If it's what your friends are on and what your like specific vested interest in the guilds and stuff is, yeah. If you had quit WoW and want to play something else, Rift might be the game for you. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a different atmosphere. It, I like it. The Rifters seem to be a lot nicer than the WoW yeah, players. Yeah, I haven't really run into anybody that I've gone... You, sir, are a douche. Yeah, haven't gotten that at I've all. I've been perfectly polite. Everybody, I'd like, every time I see a player character, I slash wave at them. Yep. That's usually how you know you run into me, is I slash wave at everybody. And most people wave back or say hi, and I'm like, wow, everybody's so dang polite. People talk to me before randomly spamming me with guild rip invites. <laughs> yep. So I guess we can move on to our other feature of the evening. Sure. Which is... We're going to talk about the games that are coming out for the rest of the year that we're because, excited about. Yeah, there's a lot, because, you know, we're about to hit the holiday 2011 crunch, and, and so in order to meet all the, like, people who want to buy Christmas presents and whatnot, or other winter-related holidays that I can't think of off the top of my head. I think there are a couple. I don't know. There, there are a few. It's, you know. So I guess we can start off with, like, something... That actually came out today. Two things, actually. Yep. Because today was a huge release day for games. It's kind of frightening, oh, actually. weird. Um, so we've already got Dead Island, which a lot of people are really excited about. I know my friends who are totally into the zombie genre of film are really excited about this one ever since that uh, teaser trailer came out with the uh, the family in the hotel room. Mm-hmm. Um, 
which we're playing right now for review, so you can tune in next week and find out what we thought of that. But also, uh, Disgaea 4, the most recent entry in the franchise that was actually programmed for the system it's on. A lot of people don't remember, Disgaea 3 was actually supposed to be a PS2 game that they then just kind of ported on the PS3 when it came out. Whoops. Extra content. No. Whoops. So yeah, this is the first Disgaea game actually programmed for the PlayStation 3, and it's looking good so far. Um, I, woo, I actually want to pick this one up. Uh, the normal retail version is only forty nine ninety nine because you know that's what games are supposed to cost. But uh, that that's come out today. Uh, look for a review for it in the co next coming weeks for us. Also came out today, THQ's uh, Warhammer Forty Thousand Space Marine. You were expressing some concern over this one earlier, as I recall. Yeah, uh, I'm having trouble finding reviews for this. Apparently, so, THQ didn't supply reta early retail copies. To or retail on Early review copies, rather. That's the thing so I meant. Other I, R word. I, I know it's a Warhammer 40k product, which pretty much says that... Uh, fanboys will buy... Fanboys slash girls will buy it. Yeah, there's... No, there are girls that play Warhammer 40,000. I'm not making any assumptions. I've never seen one, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. I've, I've seen a couple women playing War Machine. I've never seen a woman playing 40K. Just saying. Just because you haven't personally witnessed it doesn't mean they don't exist. I went to Adepticon where there were, like, thousands of people playing, and, like, two of them were women and none of them were playing 40K. I'm just... I'm just... Not prepared to rule anything out yet on that regard. Righto. Women who play 40k. Message us. I don't know. Message him. Do they exist? I don't really care. <laughs> Just saying. I don't think they're He's there. the one who's filing them under, like, mythical beings like unicorns here. They are at Adepticon. People are like, I saw a woman once. Where? <laughs> at a gas station. <laughs> she even said... Hi to me, although she might have been talking to the gentleman standing to my left. <laughs> God, I hate you some days. Some, most. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this... Actually, we played the demo because it's available for both of the major systems and over Steam. Um, really looks awesome. Uh, it, it's a game that actually makes you feel like I am a giant eight-foot-tall machine of death. That is just going to run through my enemies. Stop staring at the chat box. Chat box, you scare me some days. Um, I, I have heard that the game is short. It, it's only an eight-hour playthrough and doesn't have much reason for for actually replaying the game. But as, as like, a, a basic playthrough action game, it could totally be worth it. I, I definitely love the graphics. Yeah, I, I can't say that, I, uh, that I've that i messed with this one at all, so... So that, that'll be a future review, I'm feeling. Eh, probably. Gotta play something, right? Yep, there will be games played, and that is, in fact, a game. Uh, also coming up this month... Speaking of the hyper manual, manly, Gears o, o War 3. Gears O War. Gears O War. They don't even earn the F. So, uh, yeah. How many, uh, hey Dom, where's your wife jokes are we gonna be making? Uh. Hey Dom, can we come over and have your wife cook for us? Oh, you killed her. Hey, hey, hey Dom. Did your wife clean up when you got home yesterday? She washed her boots for it? Oh, wait. You are such a bad person. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is okay. This is the man who will show up while I'm at my regular day job and go, excuse me, miss, you sell orphan blood here. <laughs> I made sure your manager was nowhere near when I made that joke. But that's that's really the only standards we have here. Yep. <laughs> Try not to get me fired. So yeah, Gears of War three, the collection of Dom's wife is dead jokes. <sighs> okay. 
Okay, so in Octo uh, we've got a Tuesday, October 18th release for Batman Arkham City. Looking forward to that. I, yeah, I'm, I, I totally I, want I've it. been really happy with every preview I've seen for it. I love the idea of Hugo Strange being a main villain. Uh, the Joker stuff looks cool. I'm still kind of confused as to Harley's redesign. Yeah. Like, why did we suddenly change Harley this much when, like, isn't Arkham City only supposed to be, like, a month or two after Arkham Asylum? Yeah, but she can, like, change her look for no particular reason. She's also changed her facial structure and body type. It's been a while since I've watched the trailers, TBH. Right. Um, Catwoman looks cool. Definitely looking forward to trying out playing as her, which... Looks better than Anne Hathaway. It, it, it's really... I like the fact that, that Catwoman is not just a new skin for a new skin and model for Batman, that she actually plays like an entirely different character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't tell me that's the same Harley yeah, from the first game. Yeah, she looks a lot younger. She lost like five to ten years and possibly, possibly crossed an age line. She looks young. So yeah, that that's definitely a thing. But hey, it's Arkham Asylum on a bigger scale. I, I can't think of a way to sell a game to me better. By the way, chat, you're weird. Chat's always weird. What else is new? Yeah, it, it's... Also, you've got Batman jumping off of buildings. Batman jumping off of the things. The bat signal, and... Man, Two-Face is gonna be in it, and... Yep. I think the Penguin's supposed to be in this, too, huh? Yep, we will also have Penguin, Scarecrow, just a bunch of rival gangs. Which is going to be awesome. Yep. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna beat up some dudes in the dark, because that's what Batman is good at. <laughs> Detective punching people. Same thing, really. Solving crime is just a matter of hitting dudes. Ooh, what's this? The... Ico and Shadow of Colossus collection will be out on September 27th. And is that just on PS3 there? That is just PS3. So, those of you people who are like, Oh my god, Shadow of the Colossus would look so good in HD. Well, here you go. Sony actually listened to people, unlike Nintendo. On a Blu-ray! Right there! Yep. Uh, coming November 8th on the re-release bracket, we also have the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Yeah, so that's, that, that, is, that, that is a collection of two separate games, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. Just to clarify, in case you didn't already know. So you should, though. You should. Giant spoiler, you should be playing Shadow of the Colossus first. There's a reason. I'm not going to ruin that. Just, just take that as a recommendation. Do it. From him. Do it or you're doing it wrong. Also coming up, Uncharted 3, a franchise that I have actually never touched. Uh, Comes out November 1st. I hear it's like Indiana Jones if Indiana were an ass. Nolan North. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, chat box. Anyone in chat ever played uh, the Uncharted series franchise thing? No, um, Tall, to clarify, there is actually, there's the Sh Eco and Shadow of the Colossus set that's coming out, but then also, Metal Gear Solid HD Collection will be out later. Totally separate thing. Um, really, I'm just tired of Metal Gear's narrative that takes 35 minutes to explain, Snake's a clone! Oh, spoilers. Or, uh... <laughs> Come on, the original Metal Gear Solid came out how many years ago? I think we're approaching the 20 mark. No, probably not, but I think we're at least approaching... I was going to say, that's almost as long as I've been alive. We're, we're approaching the 10 mark, at least. It's been at least 10 years since the first Metal Gear Solid came out. We can spoil that Snake's a clone. All right, Tall, just making sure I'm understood. Hey, Light, welcome to chat. It's been a weird night. Hoo-hoo! I still haven't seen Old, so I'm wondering if he's going to show up like 10 so, minutes after we end the show again I don't know. Like last Chat, week. Did anyone actually played the Uncharted series of games? I've, I've never touched the things, although I keep hearing they're supposed to be really good. You, so I yeah, number three coming out, apparently it's got a desert. Um, for those of you who enjoy punishing yourself with games, Dark Souls will be released, which is kind of the unofficial sequel to Demon Souls. Uh, so those of you who like brutally difficult games, th this is the one to punish yourself with, apparently. Um, it 
The, the original game to explain it was, it is a ridiculously hard third-person action game that punishes you for every little mistake you make, to the point where players had the ability to leave notes for you to warn you what was coming up. It's like, hey, if you walk down this corridor, there's a spike trap that will kill you. You can leave a note for someone else's game. In fact, the game was so hard... But see, I'm imagining, like, people abusing the crap out of that, like... <gasps> Just wait until, like, immediately after the spike trap goes off and then have the note come up and be all like, ha 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 Actually, the game was so brutal that one of the challenges in the game... Something like that. Nice. One of the challenges in the game was to go into someone else's game online and be a boss for them. So, in theory, if you had a friend who could just show up and then make the boss stand there and do nothing while well, just wait on But then your friend lost and has to deal with the consequences. Ah. So the game punishes you for losing, so no player would go into anyone else's game and be like, yeah, go ahead and beat me. <laughs> Every player would be like, I will fight you with bitter rage. I will not lose. I will fight you like you've been doing my mom. Right? <laughs> so, like, it... It was brutally hard, but those people who really got into it, this is this is a, known as a classic. It, it was a GameSpot game of the year, mm -hmm. just because it was so unique. And hey, this one's coming out with increased capabilities. So yeah, continuing hey, the Hey, you got list. your multiplayer in my single player. Yeah, no, it's totally a multiplayer game, much like the one we're covering next week. Also coming out, id Software's Rage. Being published by Bethesda. Mm. I'm, I, I'm not really sold on Bethesda, but... I'm sold on id, though. I, I'm a very big fan of id's games. You know, I'm one Bethesda of those... Bethesda has not been doing it for me. I, I'm one of those people who looks at uh, Doom 3 and goes, I saw what you tried to do there. And while I think it's perfectly feasible to duct tape a flashlight to a gun... They were like, well, it creates good atmosphere if we don't. Mm -hmm. You will see by muzzle flash. Kind of cool. I liked Doom 3 a lot. And I'm interested in what they're seeing, what they're going to do with a post-apocalyptic world narrated by John Goodman. If that was your John Goodman impression, it kind of sucked. That was far from John Goodman. Yep. I don't do impressions. All right, next up on the list, one I'm sure you're excited for. Sims 3 Pets. You get pets back. I know you don't play The Sims Three very often, but maybe you'd be more Kitty! maybe you'd be more welcome to if you had a cat. And the PC version gets horsies, ponies, if you will. Wait, do people actually play The Sims on anything but PC? There's there's different like bonuses for if the the the, the specific X, X pack is giving like different stuff to the different console versions. And we've gone over this before. I'm sure we have. I don't know if we have. Does the Mac version get a leopard? That would be funny, but no, I don't think... That, if I mean, anyone gets like, that joke, you are a nerd. Ah, uh, hello! <laughs> what are we doing right now? Oh, that's right. Yeah, so, like, each version gets its own different, like, special pet thing. Okay. Um, let me figure out which ones it was. It was horses in the PC version. Xbox version, you get your own little Master Chief. That would be great, but... Uh, Master Chief pooped on the carpet. <laughs> ah, the exclusive on Alright, Tall, we will the, catch you later. Thanks for joining us. The, um, the exclusive on the Xbox 360 is that you could use the Kinect to direct the Sims and the pets using voice commands. So you can tell Spike to sit at the Kinect. Yeah. If I scream die at the Sims I don't like, will it work? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if you turn the cheats on. I'm just thinking it could be really awkward having someone walk in while you're playing the Sims if you're using the voice command. Alright, now you and you in the bed. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Timmy, go or watch. Or like if your mom like goes up and is all like, 
Sen, go do the dishes! And, like, and you actually got, like, a sim up there named Sen, and so, the, like, it just stops whatever it's doing, puts a baby on the floor, and goes and does the dishes. I got you, tall. Keep listening. Keep cracking. Yeah, um, I'm just picturing it could be so wrong. Okay, so that's the thing with... Timmy, go attack the mailman! Do it! And if you get exotic pets on the console versions as well, I'm not sure what they're... Define exotic. I assume they mean, like, snakes and stuff, or... or something like... I want a panda bear. Give me a panda. Limited edition, there we go. Tiger Retriever and Skunk Bergen. Yes. There you can go. also have the Mabari... Apparently EA likes to have really noisy websites, just said. We also apparently have the Mabari Warhound being added to the game from uh, Dragon Age. I assume that's paid downloadable content. Why wouldn't it be? It's from EA. That so, limited yeah. edition gets an extra, like, exclusive um, pet store thing. There's, holy crap, tons more pet traits have been added as opposed to, like, the previous three... Yeah. Let's see. Tons of sim stuff. Uh, on the console games, there's, you know, hunting and collecting skills that you can teach your pets. Um... Let's see, limited edition, which must be pre-ordered, includes exclusive exotic pets and a pet shop, both of which will not be included in the normal edition of the game. It has also been proven in a patch for the game that the new creature will be a unicorn unless it has changed. You so. could have your own sim unicorn. Yay! Alright, moving on. Uh, those of you who are fans of Marvel Comics may be interested that X-Men Destiny is set to release September 29th. This is the kind of create-your-own-character... X-Men Adventure game? I don't know. It, it's got RPG traits, which I'm actually kind of interested in. Um, yeah, choose from three different characters to play, all with unique history and personalities. Define your own evolution as an X-Men mutant. Uh, you get to pick whether you're going to be an X-Men or a member of the Brotherhood. And you get to customize and shape the story. It, it's going to be an RPG action game. Um... It looked neat. I like what they've done with the X-Men games lately. They've been doing a good job. So yeah, continuing. Is there anything actually coming out for your, uh, well, your Nintendo paperweight? My 3DS? I don't know. I, I, keep, I keep talking to myself about maybe buying the um, Ocarina of Time on the 3DS because I never played the first one. I know, shock, right? Yeah, that's dangerous to admit to. I know, right? <laughs> but I, I was a bit young at the time, so I think it's excusable. I guess. So yeah, that that's just a, a... Hey, welcome back. Show me some games. There, there really aren't any for, you, for your crate. I mean, Star Fox 3D is Super Mario 3D Land is available for pre-order. Okay. I don't know when that's coming out. So that's the same game Nintendo made when the 64 came out. Yep. Oh, oh, you're talking about new things that aren't just remakes or re-releases of other stuff? Well, there's Luigi's Mansion 2. Which is a sequel yeah. of the exact same game. But it's not a re-release of the exact same game. Hey, there's a Pokemon thing. Rumble Blast? That that doesn't sound good. Just saying. <laughs> it sounds like a bad night after hitting up Taco Bell is what it sounds like. Rumble Blast. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling anything Nintendo is doing lately. Toy Pokemon. I'm, I'm really tired of playing the games I already played before. There's that Resident Evil game that... The Mercenaries, which actually has been a mini-game in the other Resident Evil games. And also... So now we're just... Also that you can't delete the save all. Now we're just cutting out the main game and just letting you play the mini-game version. Also, you can't delete the save. <laughs> Chat has gone into singing. What? I missed this. 
Oh. <laughs> I was gonna be like, there's Animal Crossing 3DS, but again, that's a that's a remake of sequel. Animal Crossing. It's a sequel. It's Dude, a sequel it's... that doesn't add anything, which isn't a sequel. That that's well, effectively a stuff. side story. I think they add stuff. 3DS, you are failing so hard. Eh, at least I didn't pay for mine. No, you traded things you already had paid for for it. Yes, but I wasn't doing anything with them. There weren't any games on that either. So this is just a less bulky paperweight. So yes, on the note of how much the 3DS is failing, I think that'll be it for tonight's Nerd Talk. <laughs> really? Yep. Not even gonna let me try and defend this? Nope. Nope. Can't be done, I'm saving you the time. <sighs> anyway, so if you liked what you heard this evening, you can like us on Facebook. At nerdtalk.com slash Facebook. You got that backwards. <laughs> it's facebook.com slash nerdtalk. We're the more important part there. Who's ever heard of Facebook without us? You could also follow me on Twitter at nerdtalkpixie. You can follow him, but he won't say anything, so you're wasting your time. Yeah, I have one. Don't expect anything from it, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm so not okay. going to bother to say it. So, so yes. that, you can also follow Pyrosim, our resident tech guru at Pyrosim on Twitter, if that suits your fancy. Next week, we're reviewing Dead Island on the Xbox 360. We've already started that review, and uh, whew, it's going to be a good one. I've already found some things to talk about. We'll just leave it at that. For instance, why no female so far has worn pants. It's an island, but she's... Someone had to have been working who happened to be a woman. Yeah. So we'll get right on that. Until next week, I'm Sen. And I'm Pixie, and you've been listening to Nerd Talk. We'll catch you next week.